Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News contributor Dr. Holly Phillips and Samantha Heller, a registered dietitian and exercise physiologist. This week we're focusing on nutrition. First up, new numbers on just how much processed food Americans eat. A new study finds ultra-processed foods make up more than half of all the calories in the U.S. diet. And I know that sounds scary, and I don't even know why. But <laughs> Very much so. It's but the still, ultra. It's the yeah. ultra. So what exactly is ultra-processed foods? So ultra-processed foods, it's a term that's sort of been emerging in the past couple of years, and it's to acknowledge that there are different degrees of processing with food. Technically, anything that has an ingredients list can be considered processed. But, you know, I use an example of, say, whole grain bread, where uh, the ingredients are whole grain, salt, uh, sunflower oil, and maybe baking soda. At the base of it, you could call it processed, but there's still real food and real nutrients in it. Okay. Ultra-processed foods really have very little real food in them at all. So let's say they started out as corn. You know, that corn has been hydrogenated or reconstituted down to nothing. So then additives are put back in to make fake food taste real. Additives, you know, think things like preservatives, coloring, flavoring, emulsifiers, trans fats, everything you need to give food that basically doesn't exist flavor. And that's what... <laughs> ultra processed foods are. So then when you think about those foods, I think most people think of them as the junk foods. What Absolutely. impact are they having on our health? Well, you know, one of the most striking things about this study was not only that half of our calories come from these foods, right? Think about it. Half of the calories in the American diet you could buy at 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, but even more striking, 90% of the added sugar that we get in our diet comes from this type of food. Now, we know added sugar directly causes uh, weight gain and obesity, and then that opens up the constellation of all of the health problems uh, that come from those from overweight and obesity right from there. So the top problems that affect us today, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So it's interesting when we focus on these ultra processed foods, just by cutting down on those, we can make a tremendous difference to our overall health. Well, how do we do that, Samantha? How do we break away from this stuff? Well, you know, what's really interesting is not only is it difficult to break away from these kinds of ultra processed foods because they're convenient and we're used to them, mm -hmm. but they're formulated by the food companies to make us crave them. So the chemicals in them light up our brains and make us crave those foods. So to get off that treadmill of chemically processed foods, we have to start cooking at home more from scratch. So for example, if you bought a French bread frozen pizza with 810 milligrams of sodium and 21 grams of fat and it had trans fats, but you made your own at home instead, you could get a baguette, you could put your own ingredients on instead of the 60 chemicals in the frozen one, you could put in maybe 15 ingredients like tomatoes and, and uh, mushrooms and things like that. You'd slash the sodium, slash the fat, and you wouldn't have any added sugars. So cooking at home from scratch, which really doesn't take a whole lot more time, is the way we need to go to help reduce our intake of these ultra processed foods. I know it's almost not fair the chemicals are tricking us. They're tricking us and we don't realize that. You know, and, and just to just to Samantha's point, you would never go out and if you're making something at home, purchase methyl guanine xanthine gum. You know, some yeah. of these things yeah. we see on the ingredients list. You really end up with cleaner food at home, which is ultimately better. And you know what your family's eating, what your kids are eating. Yeah. Right. All right, well, this year the United Nations is highlighting the importance of a group of foods that can have big benefits for your health. They are called pulses. So what are they? Isn't that fun? A pulse that's not a heartbeat. Yeah. Pulses are in the legume or the bean family, and they are the dried peas and beans like lentils, split peas, kidney beans, um, white beans, cannellini beans, and they're loaded with nutrition. They're packed with nutrients. They're sustainable. They help the environment. They help fix nitrogen in the soil, which helps the, which helps the soil get healthy and the plants in the soil get healthier. They're very affordable and incredibly versatile. So internationally, they're a wonderful food to be adding and encouraging people to grow and consume, but also locally as well because they're highly available and we can buy them anywhere. They're called superfood, yeah. Holly. What, what makes them so good for you? You know, one of, one of the very good things about the pulses is they have zero cholesterol, but even more importantly, they're very high in soluble fiber. Soluble fiber helps to control the cholesterol levels in our body and keep our blood sugar levels steady, which helps to prevent diabetes ultimately. They're very nutrient rich, right? They're high in vitamins and minerals, especially iron. Iron is one of the top vitamin 
deficiencies worldwide. But what I like most about sort of emphasizing the pulses or this group of um, this group of, of foods is that we talk a lot about having a plant-based diet, and that sort of seems abstract when we say actually you can replace meat, you know, once a day, once a week with these high protein foods, that's a really a, a clear way to do it and, and something that can make a big difference for our it, health. It's so easy. You can have hummus, you can throw it in soups, yep. you can yeah. make Lots any other kinds of dips and sauces and tacos. You can even make cookies. So beans are great, legumes. All right, finally this morning, forget the crossword puzzles. A new study finds a bit of chocolate could help keep your brain sharp. Researchers examined data from nearly a thousand individuals. They found that people who eat chocolate at least once a week tend to perform better cognitively. That's good news. Yeah. It is. Yeah, we, we, we can't deny chocolate does have some really powerful antioxidants, right? You know, you have flavanols, you have methylxanthines. But one of the, uh, the, the, the bad news, and I'll defer to Samantha. Oh, on no, no one, bad news about uh, <laughs> Is more better? Uh, and, and the thing is, more <laughs> is not better. We, can, we should only have small amounts of chocolate. And in these yeah. studies, it was a group of studies they examined. So we don't really know how much each study uh, the participants were consuming. But the bitterer, the better. The darker, the better. This is where you're going to be getting those healthy flavanols that Holly mentioned. And also the methylxanthines, which can help bo boost cognitive uh, performance. So have your chocolate with some beans, right? Yeah. Dr. Holly Phillips, Dr. Okay. Samantha Heller, thank you both so much.